you two to get good rest. What if I have a bad dream? Well, I'm sure we can handle any dream you have. What if I dream that you sent us away into the dark and me get hurt? Really hurt? <laughs> Too bad we can't stay, baby. So I'm pretty late to this one, but I have a good explanation. For one, it takes a lot for me to commit myself to a TV series. And two, I'm pretty skeptical of Netflix's scripted content. Because to be completely honest, 90% of the time, I don't really care for it. Before watching this series, I liked a grand total of about three Netflix shows out of the 90 million of them that they make. But I'm now adding The Haunting of Hill House to that list. I was extremely skeptical walking into this, based purely on the public response to it. But once I took the time to watch it for myself, I was instantly hooked. I want to be very clear when I say this. I think this is one of the best written and directed horror series of all time. For years, I've been asking for real horror stories to be taken seriously. For a horror story to be brought to life with real quality filmmaking tactics. And to me, Mike Flanagan has done just that. Yes, it's a haunted house story, but he places greater emphasis on how these events impact the people in their lives moving forward. And because it's gradually revealed what they've been through, you gradually give a shit about them by the end of the series. To me, this series is as much of a drama as it is a horror movie, and that makes it unique in itself. This is proof that you can tell horror stories with deep emotional human themes. It's told with realistic characters who have actual flaws. And it shows the different ways that each of them cope with what they've been through as children. Another unique aspect to it is it actually follows two different timelines. So you get the story of the family moving into the haunted house, which is something that we've become accustomed to. But what we don't usually get in these type of stories is that second timeline where it explores these characters after they experience the house. I don't think we think about that stuff sometimes when we watch horror movies, like what happens after this movie's over? How does that person pick up and carry on from here? After experiencing such a traumatic event, The Haunting of Hill House basically explores that and in great detail. So we simultaneously get to see these flawed characters and get introduced to them and get to know them while also getting the backstory of why they are the way they are. All of the children characters, both in their young forms and older forms, get enough time to be properly fleshed out. They're fleshed out so well that it's to the point where it's hard to pinpoint which one was my actual favorite, because they're all honestly very compelling and relatable. I will say Lucas's episode, which explores his addiction as well as his encounters with the stretched out man, I thought it was a sneaky, amazing piece of entertainment, both from a writing and acting standpoint. It makes you root for this guy simply because his family has already written him off. I thought that was a high point of the season until I got to the Two Storms episode. I was locked in the whole time and it had me completely invested in what was going on. The only way I could describe it is that it's a slow burn in every sense of the word. You just feel like it's building to something the whole time. You feel tensions rising in every single scene. In this episode, it's the first time in forever that they've all been in the same place together. And the reason they all have to come together is an awful one, but the real tension comes from the built-up animosity between them and the fact that they haven't been able to express it in all this time. It kind of starts off with normal interactions and then it just grows into something else and you just feel like it's going to explode at some point. There's also these brilliant one-take long shots that follow the characters in this moment. It's a genius piece of filmmaking by Mike Flanagan, and you as the viewer feel like you're right there with him in them moments. It's just so tense and uncomfortable, and I thought it was the best episode of the season by far. At the same time that all this very personal and human drama is going on, you have weird supernatural shit going on around them as well. Which brings me to the horror aspects of this show, because it's kind of become known for these hidden ghosts basically being scattered throughout the episodes. And that is pretty awesome, and it creates more rewatchability, because now I want to go back and find the ones that I'm sure that I missed. But the more in-your-face, horrific, and ghostly moments are just as effective, because they're so creepy and atmospheric in the way they shot them. There's no heavy reliance on gore or jump scares, which I think is a good thing. I've long said that I wish we would go back to the more atmospheric approach to horror, because I think it's more effective in a lot of ways. I say this, and at the same time, I will say that it has one of the absolute best jump scares that I've ever seen in my life. I think the best jump scares are the ones where there's no build-up to it. They just happen. 
And this moment I'm talking about is a perfect example of that, and I won't spoil it for anyone because that would be doing a disservice to anybody who plans on watching this that hasn't. But this moment actually made me go numb for a second, and that doesn't happen with me very often when it comes to entertainment. I will also say the house is always a very important element to these type of movies, and the Hill House is up there as far as iconic haunted houses go. While watching this, I got an overwhelming Stephen King vibe. I think the time spent with the characters had a lot to do with that because that's something that Stephen King frequently does. But it's the little things like one of the characters possibly having some sort of abilities. But it's done in a way that makes it not feel cheesy. It's subtle and it doesn't take you out of the story at all. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that King himself is a fan of the novel that this show is based upon and actually called the show close to a work of genius. My favorite director of all time, Quentin Tarantino, also called the show his favorite Netflix series of all time. That's two huge ringing endorsements, and in my personal opinion, it deserves them. This was one of those times, and it doesn't happen very often anymore, where I was genuinely surprised by the quality of something. If you haven't seen it yet and you're into this type of thing, I highly recommend you go check it out right now. It's 100% worth it. It's a classic horror story with a real attention to filmmaking, and it really focuses on building quality characters. It has some absolutely iconic horror moments and imagery, and I assure you, you'll be thinking about it after it's over, and you'll probably want to rewatch it just like I do. So have you seen The Haunting of Hill House? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out.